You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again to view some volatility. Yes, it is time for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever scintillating network upon which so many of you are just feasting. You're just gorging. You're gluttonous for the content. Hey, we don't judge. I see the bandwidth bills. I know how much you guys are sucking now. It's okay. <laughs> It's a good problem to have at the end of the day. Keep gorging, you guys, of course, on the on-demand side. If you like what you hear, just we ask if you like it, keep rating and reviewing. It does help new folks come in to add to the feast every week out there. And, of course, if you want to go above and beyond, join us in the live. Of course, get access to the exclusive shows that you on-demand cats don't get, like Great Pro Q&A. You want to talk about Vol? We had a deep conversation with Scott Nations, the creator of VolQ this week. And our pro Q&A, also author of one or two or about half a dozen great financial tomes. He's got a new one coming out right now called The Anxious Investor. So all kinds of stuff. We talked about that this week, as well as, of course, our Options Oddities show every Friday. What crazy shenanigans did we get up to this week? What crazy trades did we put on? What unusual activity was unfolding before our very eyes? What weird insider trading, perhaps, did we spot? Before the regulators, <laughs> Activision. Uh, well, you got to tune into Options Oddities to find out. And the best way, the only way to get that, of course, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. That'll get you access to the exclusive pro podcast feed that gets you everything we've done, everything we ever will do. Bumps you to the front of the line for all the questions, all the other cool stuff, the giveaways. You name it, it's part of the secret club. All kinds of cool stuff in the works for that as well. So uh, get in there to enjoy the fun. And let's see who's joining us to enjoy the Vol fun today. First, let's go out to a sleepy town on the far eastern shores of these here United States, a little area called Maine, where the clam pirates are still rampaging. They're back, listeners. And we are joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show, sir. It's good to be here. It is a uh, it is a sunny, non-stormy day on the shores. 
I don't believe you. We all know from listening to this show, it is always dark and stormy. That's just the way it is. <laughs> it, it is. I'm actually, uh, as, uh, tide's coming in as I'm looking. So the Lamb Pirates, they will not be back. They will not be. Oh, so you finally did away with them once and for all? I, well, the tide does away with them every, you know, every day. For, you didn't bust, uh, bust out the shotgun? They, they leave. Bust out the old, <laughs> the old main greeting, a.k.a. the shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you deal with exactly. guests. Actually, they have an airboat, so they're pretty fast. Oh, well, you got to get a, maybe, maybe a long rifle then. We'll have to upgrade your arsenal to see in between episodes. And I do believe also joining us from the far east as well, at least the east of the U.S., somewhere around New Jersey, I do believe, if the technology gods are smiling upon him, Mr. Tom Jark, the vice president of proprietary product development over there at MyAx. Mr. Tom, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hey, Andrew, how are you? There he looking is. Looking forward to good. Nice to hear me. Okay. Nice to hear your voice finally, sir. Welcome back. <laughs> I don't. I don't use the Skype a lot. I had to get off the uh, computer and use the phone. So, uh, but no, glad to be back on the show. It's been a while. Um, obviously, a lot going on in the last, um, at least the last quarter, from what I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> so, a lot to yeah, unpack. Looking forward to. We got a lot to unpack. Yeah, with looking you, forward sir. to a good show. So let's get to it. Let's get to the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Vol Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We review the week that was and indeed still is from a Vol trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. This is another one of those days where the market's kind of struggling to figure out what it wants to be today. It seemed like we were going to head into the show mixed, and now it seems like most of the major indices have slid into the red, the Dow ever so slightly. It's pretty much barely unched. The S&P off about 0.15%, and the NASDAQ closing in on 1% to the dark side, about 0.9%. So the NASDAQ, as it is wont to do these days, has firmly embraced a direction. <laughs> the rest of the market still kind of trying to figure out what it wants to be today. But that means all this, a little bit of red. I mean, vol, you might think vol might firm up, but we are heading into a weekend. It's not a ton of red, so we're not really seeing vol get much firmer today. We're still seeing coming into showtime. We had spikes still shy of the 23 level, about 2285. That puts it down a little over one and a half points, about 1.65 points from where it was on last week's show. Bix Cash, when we kicked off the show, about 22 and a quarter. That puts it down about exactly two points from where we were this time last week. So Vix and Spike shy of 25. That means, unfortunately, listeners, our frequent returning guest star these days, Mr. Loggins, will not be able to join us today. He's, he is above 25 only. That's when we're in the danger zone, listener. But who knows? The way these markets are, we could be there by the end of the show. So maybe, maybe we'll get a special guest appearance by Mr. Loggins a little bit later in the show. VVIX coming into showtime right around 110, about 109 and a half. That actually puts it up on the week, about one and a half points. Isn't exactly surprising. We're kind of at, you know, somewhat stable levels for VVIX right now, given how much tumult we are seeing out there in the markets. And let's go out, since we're talking VVIX, let's also talk its counterpart, the Viking, aka V-Spikes. That's at about a 133 when we kicked off the show. It's actually down about eight points from this time last show. So a lot to unpack. Uh, Mr. Tom, you mentioned at the top of the show, it's been quite a while since we've chatted with you, since well before the world was plunged into this whole Ukrainian morass, as well as, you know, I do believe maybe even since the start of the year when everything really kicked off with a volatility tumult. So we have a lot to catch up with with you. So before we even get to this week, sir, Catch us up. What's been going through your, your trading screens and what's been catching your eye as the markets kicked off this year? And we saw a lot of vol start creeping in. Then, of course, over the last month with the additional vol from Ukraine and the Fed, sir. Then we'll get to this week. Wow, that's a lot to answer <clears throat> in this one show. We can talk for hours. But, um, yeah, so uh, what have I been up to? Um, so, well, I'll, I'll keep it on the shorter term here. Last week I was down in Florida. I was at an FAA conference, FIA conference which is the uh, Futures Industry Association. Uh, it was amazing how many people were there internationally. Oh, local, you were down there, huh? I skipped, um, I skipped it this year. It's the first time really since the start of the pandemic. Obviously, there were no in the last couple of years. It's the first time I've missed an actual in-person one in quite some time. I heard it was a pretty good turnout. So that's that was the case? Yeah, it was really, really big turnout. Um, it was my first time going ever to the, uh, you know, to this conference. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty interesting. There was, uh, I think they said there was about 1,000 people in attendance. 
Um, you know, there was, there was, um, I mean, the weather was not the greatest, but, uh, but still there's a lot of people there. Um, other than spikes being the main focus, of course, ha, no, I'm just kidding. Um, there was a lot of, um, digital crypto, you know, there's like almost an inflow you know, for people that said they were there in the past, you know, they'd never seen such a, you know, presence of the, uh, the digital and crypto world. Uh, so it was, you know, it was pretty interesting. He even had, um, A-Rod was one of the guests um, that, that came on. He spoke with um, the FTX CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried. And, uh, you know, even even those two were, uh, you know, even A-Rod was chat, chatting about digital assets and things like that. So it was a, yeah, it was a pretty pretty uh, pretty good turnout, good, you know, really good, a uh, lot of meetings, um, you know, really good vibe overall in the industry. So it's, uh, you know, other than what's going on, as you mentioned, in the Ukraine, and, you know, we never want to, um, you know, we like volatility in the markets. We like movement. We like price discovery. We like volumes, but we don't like it when it's at the, um, you know, uh, you know, in, in terms of wars and people dying. It's not not, not ever good. But uh, anyway, but um, yeah. So I can let me know if you want me to um, go on a few other things. I can, or we can switch it over to uh, Andrew. But one thing I wanted to mention um, on the Myax front um, is we had a recent hire. We hired um, Caitlin Meyer. Uh, she's joining the exchange group uh, in a marketing and sales role. Um, she, um, she, I don't know if you know the name, but she, she was formerly with the CBOE and prior to that CME. So she you know, we're looking forward to working with Caitlin. She's, but she'll be a great addition to the team. Uh, you know, working with, uh, Matt and myself a lot and, uh, Andy Naibo and, you know, and the rest of the whole crew. So that's, uh, that's, that's been a new development, but, uh, yeah. So the, um, what, you know, one thing too is that, uh, you know, you mentioned V spikes, uh, it's out there, it's being quoted. It's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know if your, your, your user screens should be able to pick it up. It's put out over Opera, so they should. If they're, you know, if they're looking at options products, they should be able to pick it up. But I'll, I'm gonna pause there. Let you guys jump in, and uh, we can talk vol. We can talk whatever you want. All right, we'll get into all. We'll get the rock lobster, and then we'll come back give you a chance to collect your thoughts. But you're right. Yes, a lot to unpack there. B spikes. You're right. It is starting to uh, get out there and propagate a little bit more. I still, I think it's just reflexively now, Tom. I just go to Simon's site, T3 Index. I, I just grab it from there because I know it's there. And I, I usually pull up a bunch yeah, of other yeah. stuff while I'm there. I'll pull up some of Simon's got a yeah. bunch of things I always check anyway. So I, I usually swing by there anyways. You can always go there, listeners, as well. Uh, T3index.com, Simon's site. He is the creator, after all. So he does have it out there. So if you're having a hard time finding V-Spikes for whatever reason, that's the place I go. You get the bit skew. You get all the kind of stuff he's putting out there. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, while you're cleaning your shotgun in between invasions of the Clam Pirates, what's been catching your eye from a vol perspective this week, sir? Well, I would have to say today is the first day in uh, at least 30 days that we've had a somewhat normal contango in VIX and in the future curve, like um, all uh, according to our option pit theoretical value for vol, um, it is, uh, we have a little bit of, um, uh, we have a like a pretty uh, a pretty normal curve, basically. <laughs> Although VIX is twenty two, and we're at the upper end of the range, um, uh, we do have a very normal curve. So crazy. <laughs> I, I remember. I, I guess what was in the summer summer twenty twenty when we kept having these like crazy uh, crazy vol curves with. Um, even when VIX was relatively high. Remember those future premiums just got massive. This isn't massive. This is kind of normal-ish, I would say. I have no so, idea what you're talking about. We saw massive futures premiums. I don't I was I was busy, sir. You're you you were you were busy. You're you're polishing your nails or something. Like yes, that. that's so, what I do here in the studio. Um, and this is the first time I think in a month. I, I'm gonna go a longer than a month, probably five weeks. So in general, this curve shape is bad for the vol products. So that means you've got the you know volatility in the front term in the you know the like SPX and all the major indices that falls starting to come down. You're starting to have a more normal curve. Ball goes up in the back. Forward ball uh, gets higher. All of those things, curve shape changes, and it basically makes it uh, it puts a lot of pressure on the on the vol products. We won't speak about VXX anymore. It's that is the vol product that shall not be named. I decided. Um, and, uh, just terrible for the industry, I think, but I will, I will 
Uh, of course, I just gave my opinion. So, <laughs> <laughs> where does it r- it really quickly? <laughs> if we're not going to speak about it, we'll just speak about it now, really quickly. Then, where does it rank for you in terms of like this versus maybe the neutering of like SVXY? Which one is more appalling to you? I, I think this one is really more appalling. This is worse. Um, wow! Wow! I think I still and, and I still hold is, the torch for SVXY myself. Right. I mean that one. That one did just destroy basically everybody's wall positions. Yes, they, they asked Long Vegas. They, they asked no down. one. They did it overnight. Let's just do it. Yeah. OCC <laughs> ran with it. Sure, change the entire structure of the product overnight with no problem. Why not? Nobody like. Here's another thing: is don't the people in the OCC understand how options work? <laughs> you take the underlying uh, movement down by fifty percent. <laughs> All the ball's going to go to zero. Why would right options now. people who hold long premium, why would they care about such things? Yeah, oh, it's okay. So this one is just that now there's no direction in the XX anymore. So because there's like it's the the, the tethering is all, all messed up. So, you know, ball futures are down. VXX is up, you know, or, or it's up to $10 for no reason. Yeah, hey, what the heck, you know, because there's a squeeze. So. Actually, you know what it is? It's because I always thought VXX was reliably crappy that they would at least do what they're supposed to do. And now they can't even be – and now it's just crappy. It's not even reliably crappy. So it's – it was a, it's, I'm just going to say the disappointment is more. However, the, the dollar effect was much worse for me on the SVXY getting cut in half because um, I thought, you know, oh, wow, this is going to be a no-brainer watching the ball pop back up when this thing comes back to life. And then, oh, oh wait a minute. Nope. <laughs> We're changing our mind. So all oh, those calls just went away. Um, anyway, so, um, so yes, this one uh, was not financially painful in any way, shape, or form. Ah, there we go. If you own some weekly puts in BXX, it could have been painful. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you did that, I actually, I was weird because if, for one, I did just because we were a uh, VIX VXX was a more back was kind of flatter. Um, and I don't own many. Um, and I, I might have probably just closed, uh, I did close some uh, prior to. So I never had, I just, for whatever reason, I'm part of this, I just didn't have any on. Um, and I, I don't like owning really any VXX puts when the curve is when we're, it's, it's kind of backward. They just, they go to die. So I just, I've learned to avoid it at that point. So. I say right now, normally in the cycle, I would be, yeah, I would looking at as many vol puts as you can possibly find right now. This is a perfect part of the cycle um, with just kind of a light hedge and just lean short and see, you know, and just try to ride the curve down a little bit. But it is um, VXX is in, until they get their act squared away. And then the next part is then I hear they might be reissuing a normal SVXY and a normal UVXY, like a 2X1X. Did they announce that this week? That was, there was speculation that they were going to announce that product. I heard that Monday, although I did not see who the issue was. Are they going to, oh, so it wasn't a cost fin to it. Oh, so it's not an official SVX. It's not like the same issuers are going to just have a a neutered version and then a a new, a new one, the regular back. Someone else is trying to ape that. Okay. Basically, they're trying to create a new style product, but similar to the old ones. I need, yeah, to, I need I know. to do some digging. Crazy, huh? I need to do some digging. Well, we heard that about the new XIV too back in like October, and we still haven't seen hide nor hair of that. Right. You know, so, so yeah, I'll, they're, I'll believe they're talking it. Talking about, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm just looking here for some news on this new uh, new SVXY. Is that, is that what Andrew's referring to? No, he's referring to uh, a new SVXY apparently, which I had not heard. A, a new SVXY, a, a, a one time product, and a, a similar to the UVXY old two X product. Okay. So that was the stuff. I was just on FinTwit. I'm just, you know, I, I hate regurgitating crap I see on there. But were you lurking on Zero Hedge again? Were you reading that yeah. uh, that font <laughs> of information for the Russian uh, intelligence agencies? <laughs> it's. I have to say, you can almost write. You can almost write some of the Zero Hedge stuff, just depending on what day of the week it is and what's going on. So that is it's, the uh, quite entertaining. That is definitely the weirdest site on the planet. They have half articles. Some of them are actually kind of good about the ball surface, and then they go deep into crazy histrionics about the Clintons or whatever that it is <laughs> given day. It just, it gets pretty nutty pretty quick, but uh, I digress. Let's go. Mr. Tom, before we get into some of the products right now, I know you're, you're champing at the bit to talk about what the heck you're seeing right now. Cause there is a heck of a lot of vol to analyze, even if it is coming off a little bit today. So what's been catching your eye this week, sir? Uh, so, well, this morning, especially, uh, you know, waking up to the kind of the you know, two, two, two news events. I saw that I thought were kind of interesting, obviously the, uh, you know, Citigroup uh, 
rate hike expectations, you know, increased massively. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, a pretty significant, um, you know, th there's definitely been a lot of talk about that. And that's, you know, obviously we're in this inflationary environment um, where longer dated, um, you know, rates are coming, are, are, have been, you know, very bit up. Um, from the vol perspective, you know, I, I just been noticing, you know, it seems like all, the whole vol complex has come down quite a bit with the, you know, kind of with the rebound in markets here in the last few weeks. Um, what I thought, you know, but what's really interesting, obviously, is the, to me, is the rate vol versus everything else. Rate vols have really, you know, picked up quite a bit um, and stayed higher. Uh, you know, they, they came off with everything else the last couple of weeks, but in the last few days, they've really upticked again. Um, and uh, so, um, yeah, with that being said, I think there's, uh, you know, I look at, um, I look at Simon's uh, bit vol and uh, the ETH, his Ether, Ethereum vol. Uh, you know, those things have really come off a lot, uh, which is, uh, you know, which is really surprising to me as well, because th that that universe is, you know, can 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 move pretty drastically when it wants to. Uh, the other news event I saw that was pretty interesting to me was, you know, we talk about volatility. I've been on the show in a while, but uh, you know, you look at the uh, the hard commodities. You know, obviously we talk about nickel and things like that. But uh, I saw that the the LME raised their guarantee fund from uh, one billion to two billion. So it's a pretty a pretty massive increase in their uh, their guarantee fund. So. Uh, I'm not an expert on that market, but I will, uh, you know, that I just thought it was a, a highlight that to me that was, um, you know, showing a little bit of you know, more stress in the system there. So, um, and just on the uh, on the rate part of it, uh, you know, I think it's interesting too because I, you know, and I haven't checked with my, um, you know, my structured product friends on the bank side, but you know, when when rates typically go higher, as we're seeing with inflation, uh, you you typically see a lot more um, interest in some of the structured note world. Um, I know in the past we always talk about structured notes being an alternative for yield products, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but when when the rates do go higher, it makes it more attractive for the um, some of the long strategies. Where you know you can think of a basic example of a, um, a you know a, a bond plus call kind of strategy. So um, if you want, I'll go into it real quickly. But so what happens there is is the bank you know would sell a, an investor a note for you know a hundred dollars. Uh, but that the bond underlying that note is is only worth you know let's say ninety dollars. Um, with that ten dollars extra, uh, the bank would go out to the marketplace and you know they would they would buy call options. Uh, they'd spend that premium uh, less their fee, of course. Uh, so you have these uh, you know bond plus call type products that um, you know we could we could see reemerge. So um, I haven't like I said I haven't really been chatting with some of the folks in that world, but. Um, you know, that generally keeps a, keeps a decent bid to, uh, to some of the longer dated volatility as well. So it's just a couple of things I wanted to mention there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, these, these, you know, all these volume indices are really, really interesting to watch right now. Everything's all over. And as far as um, on that ETF uh, on VXX, yeah, the, you know, I, I think a Andrew said the word perfectly. You know, it's, it's disappointing. I hate to see any kind of any, any um, you know, scars against our uh, or any, any strikes against our business at all. Um, but, uh, you know, I think they've been handling it well by not, there's been no, I mean, there's been no follow-up as far as, um, uh, they haven't made any more announcements since the first announcement that they're halting the creations, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe an update here and there would be a little bit nice, but, uh, but no, it's, um, you know, it, 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 you know, the bank can do that. Those are notes on the bank's balance sheet and they, you know, they have the right to, uh, to, to make those calls. I see today it's at a 20% premium in the, uh, in, in the uh, markets right now. Yeah, it's pretty much about the highest, it's around the highest it's been since that note was launched. That note has been around since January of 2018. So it lived through Balmageddon and it didn't get as crazy from a premium perspective as it is now. So that should give you some frame of reference, listeners, for how abnormal things are. And you're right. Again, maybe we'll get to BXX a little bit later, but it would be nice. Maybe an update or two would be nice. It would help to maybe derail some of this madness that is going on out there. But it's not an all VXX show all the time. By the way, Mr. Rocklops, I did look while uh, Tom was talking. And all I could find was really that announcement, same announcement where they announced the new XIBs where they also announced that kind of levered 2X version out there, which I believe is what you're referring to. So that was back in October of last year. But we haven't heard anything, I don't think, new since then. At least I haven't heard anything. So I think like a lot of people, we're all still waiting and seeing to see when these products launch because they will undoubtedly, at the very least, probably give a lift to some of the vol futures, which is uh, where we're heading now. Let's get on into the land of the volatility surface, you know, and you were mentioning it earlier, Mr. Rock Lobster, we're finally seeing some normalcy return to the uh, the VIX futures out there. And that's 
They've come down, I think, substantially is is the key word out there. Coming into the start of the show, we had that April future down over 7 points, 7.1 points from this time last week. And the May future was closing in on 5 points. You don't usually see that level of annihilation in the VIX futures list. That shows just how rich that front portion of the curve had become with all that backwardation. They had a lot of room to go there and be pretty much squeezed all of it out over the courts of this past week. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye out there from the aggressive squeezing of the near portion of the ball surface, sir? Yeah, that's that magical blinking button in front of you again, sir. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I thought I was going to go a whole show where I was just going to hang all the technical issues on Tom. You know, I was going to get away with it. I was going to get away with it. <laughs> You're going to wave no. your finger at Tom and say, na 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 boo doo Yeah, na 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 boo boo You're the one with all the tech <laughs> issues. And I still, and all I had to do was press a button. Still that that troublesome button. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we kind of called the ball being lowered this week. I remember you and I we were so just it was one of those things where, you know, so much like badness was sort of priced in. And it, thankfully, not, it has not come to pass so far. So um, and I think that was the big issue. Like, OK, oil squeeze. Now, all of a sudden, you know, then, of course, across the tape and you watch all the oil stocks exploded today. Because uh, the U.S. is going to get more into the production and ex and exporting of said uh, battle fossil fuels. So uh, there's been a little bit of a a about face, I think, in Washington D.C., which is good. Um, so I think you got that. Anyway, kind of like more normalcy there. Um, and as far as like the VIX futures go, I mean, they're they're they're. I think the I think the vol like if I'm looking at short term vol. Uh, it's in the teens in the weeklies in the SPX, which I think is a little low. So, um, but it's low because nobody wants to buy it anymore. So the liquidity providers are probably more than happy to let stuff drift lower so they could scoop it all up if they want to. Um, uh, but again, normal curve, much lower vol in the front. Um, and that's, and that's the recipe for lower vol. So, and this, if this, uh, you know, some and I and I also think, you know, when the Fed came out with their sort of more aggressive posture, stocks have been straight up since then, which seems counterintuitive. But like, hey, we're not going to let this inflation get out of hand. Like, I don't know if they've gone shopping lately <laughs> or looked at a grocery bill. There, I mean, I don't know. I think our grocery bills are fifty percent from last year. Um, so I, I s somehow that noise, you know, I don't think. Powell buys his own, you know, bread, milk, and eggs anymore. So uh, maybe his maid told offensive. Jeeves, the manservant, <laughs> has not showed him the receipts in a while, sir. Exactly, exactly. Uh, he's like, oh, my, my budget's gone up. Uh, so uh, I, I think that the Fed finally getting, you know, they're, I think they're a year too late, to, to be quite honest with you. Um, but uh, that's, again, that's just my dumb opinion. Um, but it, the market, listen, all I know is they said it, the market went straight up. Um, so, and also the fact that, you know, I, it looks like there is negotiations going on. So, okay, you have this inflation thing. Uh, you have some maybe more oil production. These are all, I would say, economically positive things. Um, so, and doing something about inflation and try to soak up and, you know, and stop printing money for crying out loud, um, like knuckleheads, knuckleheads. So. I think the market likes that news in general. Uh, politicians probably don't, <laughs> but uh, but I think uh, but stocks have so and you know and they they got sold pretty hard so and there are a lot of bargains out there still. Um, I would not say like the largest tech names are necessarily a bargain, but um, there's a lot of other stocks that are so. Um, and we'll see how that all goes. So um, I overall hopefully. It will be better, especially for the poor citizens of Ukraine that keep getting bombed and are miserable. Um, at least for right now, the market has gotten back to it, and we traded in the 20 handle for VIX today uh, for a brief moment. So that, you know, those are all signs that we're coming to accept what we're seeing right now. So for better or worse, that's what we have. And uh, although, you know, un underlying volatility, I still think is pretty high. It's not like it's not nothing. I mean, we're having a lot of two percent days still in the Qs, one and a half percent days in the SPX. Um, we had kind of a we've at least had that range today. 
um, intraday or very close to it. So, so stocks are still moving. I think the short term vol is relatively inexpensive. I'm not going to buy a bunch of it on a Friday, but we'll see how that looks on a Monday. We shall see. And speaking of the futures, Mr. Tom, if anything's catching your eye out there in the vol surface, have at it, sir. And then also, I know when you're not busy talking to me, you spend a lot of time over there talking about spikes futures. So if you have any updates on those as well, have at it, sir. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Um, as far as the, you know, the term structure of the the futures, whether it be um, you know, whether it be VIX or spikes, um, you know, I think Andrew touched on it earlier that you know the levels are definitely inflated, but the curve is you know getting to be look somewhat normal. Um, the contango uh, is is quite steep, but the overall levels are pretty high. So you know, it kind of makes it interesting for you know some of these uh, these vol ETPs that um, you know should should you know I don't. You know, should should vols reset lower, and at this current steepness, it could be a, you know it could be a pretty interesting move in these things. But uh, um, as far as uh, spikes volumes and, and you know the um, so on the, on the future side, just just I'll go back to MJX overall. So spikes futures trade on MJX, and you can access them through uh, the CME Globex platform. Um, but being that um, on MJX, MJX also has some you know some a lot of the wheat products. Um, and some of the other soft commodities that, uh, you know, they, they had record volumes in February. Um, Spike's futures have been coming off a bit um, in the last few months, but, you know, we've had some good progress. And I would, I would say overall, the, 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 the liquidity and the market quality is still, um, is, is still quite, it, it looks, it, it's great. You know, the market, um, our, our liquidity providers are, are putting out good markets um, and they've been in there consistently. So that's been, you know, that, that's what we're looking for. Um, so, you, you know, love to see, uh, even, even you, Mark, in your big portfolio, you can, you can, you know, I think they can handle your, your size. They well. can take down my, I don't know. <laughs> Once I bring that thunder, there's no going back, Tom. So there you go, there you go. be ready, uh, be ready before the whale moves in. That's all I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, no, but it's been, yeah, it's look, it's, it's, it's going smooth. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're speaking to a lot of folks, uh, talk to a lot of people down at FIA. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the product. It's just, you know, getting, um, you know, it's, it's just a slow moving process to get people to, uh, you know, to migrate into it. Well, let's see how much migration we got going on. We were talking about the spikes options on our last show. We had that big four way that went up and we were wondering for a while there when they're going to close it. It obviously was biased towards the upside. Well, they finally did during our show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so we broke that down for you last week. We're waiting for that new positioning to come back in, in the land of spikes options, but it was good to see. People got while the getting was good. If you have an upside trade, <laughs> the market is shooting up and vol is shooting up, then you probably would behoove you, unless you're you know, 50 cent and you're waiting for that absolute perfect moment, it probably would behoove you to do something with that. And that's exactly what they did. Let's go out now to the land of VIX options, see what they're doing. And we're starting to see the numbers pick up a little bit today. I was looking kind of light earlier, and that's kind of what you would expect in kind of a gentle, drifting, mixed day. With the markets deciding to uh, usually hang out a little bit lower, even though now they're starting to trend towards the green. So we shall see if this volume creep continues. But as of right now, about 333,000 contracts going up on the day. The ADV has continued to erode. It's down to about 570,000 now. It's down about 9,000 from this time last week. Let's break down a top 10. What are the size positions right now in VIX options? Cost you 131,000 contracts to break into the top 10. That's not nothing. It's not enormous either. We've seen it, you know, over a buck 50 easily in the past. So not quite there. That gets you to the April 23 puts, by the way. 6040 right now uh, puts over calls down from 7030 last week. So one more call sneaking in there in the top 10 this week. Uh, number nine, we got the June 70s, our old favorites, 132,000 of those. Number eight, a buck 36 of the June 16 puts. Number seven. 137,000 of the April 35 calls. So, dare I say it, a mildly relevant call, certainly compared to the 70s and 75s. <laughs> it's, it seems comparatively reasonable. And then number six, 137,000 of the April 22 puts. Number five, the even more reasonable uh, April 30s, 144,000 of those. Can we find something in the 20s? That's probably a bridge too far, listeners, but we'll see. Uh, number four, 150,000 of the April 20 puts. Number three, a buck 55 of the June 18 puts. Number two, a buck ninety-four of the June nineteen puts, and still, still dominate the tape, listeners. That other part of that one by five there, the Ox seventy fives. Not only have they not closed any of these out, they're still open a quarter of a million of these freaking things still open of the October seventy fives. That's just 
I think the technical term is crazy town out there today. Let's see how crazy it is out there today. There's 333,000 contracts on the tape, like we said. Looks like most of that, almost a third, 93,000 of that is coming in the April 30s. So back to that strike we were just talking about. They finally maybe looks like they're maybe buying more. So <laughs> some folks thinking maybe we're not done with the 30 handle out there in Vol. Uh, number two, a distant number two today, only 22,000 of the May 22 puts. So it really is all about the April 30s out there today. Maybe I'll have to, I'll have to dig a little bit later to see if I could well, exactly what's going up with those bad boys. And number three, we got 20,000 of the April 24 puts. Number four, 19,000 oh, <laughs> of the June 130. So you know what? Forget what I just said about the 75s as being outlandish or optimistic. We've got t- almost 20,000 of the June 130s going up today. I need to go find what the other leg of that is as well. My goodness. I don't, think, I don't see another leg against that. I think that's just... That's just straight up June 130s going up for 15 cents, almost 20,000 times. My goodness. And rounding out the top five today, about 14,000 of the April 25 calls. So, man, we got something for everybody here today. We've got uh, little puts in May. We've got somewhat relevant calls in April. And we've got redonkulous calls in June (laughs) for just about everybody. Yesterday, not a heck of a lot going on. 389,000 contracts on the day. The, The big paper, I should say. 25,000 of the April 22 puts and 23,000 of the May 25s. Oh, we're getting up against this. Let's just uh, let's keep rolling here to Wednesday. Wednesday, a little bit more paper, 495,000. And the big trade was 40,000 of the April 40s, followed by 40,000 as well of the June 65s and 40,000 as well of the Nov 65. So maybe rolling some of that June to Nov. We have seen that before recently. It was a pretty close spread, so it was pretty cheap to do it back when they did it last week. Maybe that's why they're doing it again. Also, similar paper of the April 40s. I don't, I don't think that's related, but you never know. We also see the April 30s going up 38,000 times and 35,000 of the May 20 puts on Wednesday. Tuesday, 647,000. So far, the most active day of the week. The big trade on Tuesday, 88,000 of the June 70s. So back to those fun strikes, listeners. 88,000 as well of the June 60s. Looks like a bit of a vertical going up there. Number three, we got 30,000 of the April 25 calls. Number four, 22,000 of the April 75s. And rounding out the top five on Tuesday, the April 22 puts 21,000 of those. So two, shall we say, relevant strikes and three fun ones. And then a Monday, 484,000 contracts on the tape. The big one, once again, the April 75s. People cannot get enough of these freaking strikes. 30,000 of those things going up on Monday, followed by 23,000 of the May 20 puts, 22,500 of the April 110 calls. <laughs> I love these strikes. Uh, number four, we have 20,000 of the May 35s and rounding out the top five on Monday, 20,000 pretty much exactly of the April 22 puts. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, what caught your eye out here this week? And inquiring minds want to know how many of the June 130s and the April 110s did you trade this week, sir? <laughs> A lot of the April, I, you know what? Did we? Uh, I was just looking at that volume list. Did we? Did you see uh, any more of the? Did they buy any more of those ox? They did not. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. No, they're they, still at they, a quarter well, of a million. Open. That was open. That yeah, was th- open. Those are a quarter of a million, and that's pretty much been staying there for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and they haven't done anything. So they're sitting on those. Um, I thought the biggest volume change that was a, a change was we actually are seeing put buyers again this week. So, um, we're seeing uh, put we buyers. We're seeing put buyers and the 130 call. <laughs> <laughs> 130 calls. Well, you know that that's kind of the beauty of VIX. You know, I was going to say like, that's why I love this. Like, I love this product because it can do that in the same week in the same breath. It can do those trades. I know. Well, the funny thing is, like the 130 calls are a dollar, and the 20 puts are a dollar, <laughs> and VIX is 22, which is you know, like for our, our listeners. You know, you have to, you, you have to, you have to digest that. That's not normal. You, that, the call that's a hundred dollars out of the money is a dollar, and the put that is two dollars out of the money is a dollar. <laughs> you know, so there's, there's that, there's that funk with VIX. Um, so I, I just have listeners, you know, understand kind of how this, this product works. It has some, uh, let's just call it nuance. Can we use that word? Is that a is that a, uh, it's a it's a very charitable description of it. Sir. Nuance. Yes, it's a nuanced product. It's a nuanced product. So yes, I did, and 
I actually, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I'm, I'm uh, what's his name, uh, <laughs> Overby, you know, you just, you sit down and you wait until the thought goes away. Lay down what's until the name? urge goes away, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love that one because I'm looking at like, okay, the April 20, uh, 18 puts are only a dime. Oh, not anymore. They just ticked up. And I was look I was looking at the 19 puts are only a dime, and now they're 20 cent bid. And I'm like, oh, I just oh, missed the opportunity that's of a life. Doubler in your face right there, sir. Right there. Easy. So free money. I just they are definitely, and here's the funny thing, right? The 18 put, 700 volume is only 700. So there's not even, you know, nobody in their right mind is thinking VIX is going to 18, which is still, you know. 70 percent of all vol is 18 and less but right now no <laughs> it's not there so anyway it's yes 18 is the bottom of zone uh three actually so that's more like at the 50 percent level kind of the half and half right around there so anyway but there's no there's it's like no nobody cares nobody cares so it's still people care a little bit just a little bit um but nothing like uh Normally, you know, when you're trading at a 22, usually there's just huge appetite for that stuff, but not right now. Why would you care about an 18 put when you can get all the 130s you want for 15 cents? I mean, what, what are you doing with it? So you got pretty much equidistant there. You got a dime for the 18 put in April or 15 cents for the 130s in June. Which way are you going, Rock Lobster? Clearly, someone went the other way 19,000 times today. So you got 19,130s. And what'd you say? 700 April 18 puts going on. <laughs> Nobody cares about the April 18 puts, sir. It's all about the 130s. That's where the action is these days. Again, this is just a, a product that kind of speaks for itself sometimes, and this is, this is one of those days. I was trying to dig to see if I could see any other legs of some of those spreads going up here. It looks like the June 130s did go up straight up there. Just straight up June 130s for 15 cents. <laughs> Splitting the uprights. They were a dime at 20. So uh, what are your thoughts on those? Do you like those April? Oh, excuse me, those June 130s? What would you want to do with them for 15 cents? Hit us up. Let us know. Let's keep on rolling. We touched on this briefly earlier in the show, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's, it's clearly a, shall we say, to be charitable, broken product right now. But it's good old VXX. It was at about 25 and a quarter when we kicked off the show. That was down one and a quarter points. It has ticked up a little bit since then, closing in on 25 and a half. That puts it down still about a point. But again, the movements in this thing are, I think, are to put it charitably, nonsense right now. It's pretty much a closed-end fund at this point. It moves around based on the whims of the market and nothing to do with what's going on in the VIX futures, which is ostensibly what it's supposed to track. But until we get more updates from Barclays, this is pretty much what we're going to get. Uh, that ADV is down precipitously as well, reflecting this turmoil. It's down to 340,000. It's down 45,000 contracts in this time last week. So people are voting with their wallets. They don't want to touch a, an absurd product <laughs> right now. And so we shall see. If Barclays keeps this up, that ADV is going to continue to erode precipitously. Let's do a quick top five out here. Number five. Uh, 36,000 of the April 20 puts. Number four, 40,700. Easy for me to say. 40,700 of the April expiring on the first of the weekly 16 half puts. Number three, 41,000 of the March expiring today, 19 half puts. So those go in the way of the dodo. Those don't seem like they have much of a chance. Again, some of the victims, Mr. Rothfuss, we were talking about of, uh, of this madness in Barclays right now. Number two, 48, almost 49,000 of the April 18 puts. And rounding out the top 10 in VXX right now, about 50,000 of the April 30 calls. It's still nine to one overall puts over calls in the top 10, if you are wondering. The only call is the number one position, about 50,000 of the April 30s. That's kind of interesting. In terms of what's lighting it up out there today, again, let's just look really quickly. Not a heck of a lot. That's uh, 5,000 of the March 26 calls and 3,400 of the March 26 halves. It's all expiring today, paper pretty much going up today, and it's pretty light all things considered out there. Only 162,000 contracts on the tape today, listeners. So things are looking pretty light. I'm sorry, let's, uh, today 112,000 contracts on the tape today. Let's get on out to its sister product now because we have already spoken about VXX at length today. This is UVXY. Uh, this is, you know, uh, the remnants of the great neutering from back in the day, all oh, the SVXYs and UVXYs of the world. UVXY was at about 14 and a quarter when we kicked off the show. It's still around there, down slightly. That puts it down nearly two points, about one and three quarters points from this time last show. So UVXY is still pretty much performing as it is supposed to do in these markets. So the ADB down a little bit. It's down to 238,000, down 7,000 contracts from this time last week. 
And so far today, we're seeing about actually some decent paper, about 213,000 contracts on the tape out there. Let's do a quick top five out there as well. By the way, the overall top 10, 70-30 puts over calls. Uh, top five, we got about 10,000 of the March 14 puts. When I say March, it's all going out today, listeners. Followed by about 10,000 as well, the March 14 half puts. Number three, 10,600 of the March 15 calls, our only call in the top five. Number two, 12, almost 13,000 of the March 16 puts. And the number one position out there in UBXY right now, about 13,300 of the June 20 puts. So interesting. <laughs> Very meaty puts in UBXY right now. In terms of what's lighting it up out there today, uh, almost 20,000 of the March 14 halves and about 13,000 of the April expiring in the weeklies. The first 15 calls are the big trades out there. Mr. Rock Lops, we talked a lot about UBXX. If you have more to add, have at it. Then anything catching your eye this week in UBXY, sir? Uh, yeah, a little bit of put action, but it's also getting down to that like little tiny number again, right? I mean, when, when do they usually uh, split it again? It's usually around high? 10. It's usually around 10, right? Yeah. I mean, this is one of those things where, you know, I'm, I don't really teach the students premium selling, but it's kind of one of those things where, you know, selling some call spread and selling some puts like, like little straddly action. Cause it's kind of dead down here when it's 14 bucks. Um, I mean, it moves, uh, it is decaying at around, uh, 24 to six, about 30 cents a week. So there's a little action in it. Um, and you know, and it could, you know, and another thing is like, yeah, an 18 wallets an 18 VIX and that, that thing, that product would get smacked around pretty good. It'd be down like three bucks or something. So there is potential for it to move still. Um, but like as an upside product, you're like, uh, I mean, it can move. Uh, but again, the lower it gets and you're kind of waiting for the split to happen again. So it's getting kind of down to that place. Once it gets close to 11 or $10, they're getting ready to split it again. So, but yeah, if we do have a real vol crush and we get back into the teens, uh, UBX will get, get nailed. So uh, there was some fun, uh, uh, some fun trade in there. I traded some strangles last week, but I closed them. Um, so there was some good action in there, buying some strangles and making some money. Um, and now we just see what happens if we actually get the real VIX crash or not. Um, so anyway, um, and we'll see, we'll see. Uh, and I guess there's, you know, it's another thing if you think about it, like products like the spikes and VIX, like, so, you know, you've got your future, you got your term. I mean, they're, they're solid. They're not going to get wonky on you. And I think that's, you know, it's, I, let's, if I don't know, if I'm doing the marketing, <laughs> I'm saying, Hey, we got our futures and we got our spikes and no weird stuff happens because we're not going to change stuff. So, uh, which is which is looking pretty good like all i'm looking at is vix now i have to say um um and spikes so because i know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna have that weird lateral arabesque for an underlying it's gonna mess things up so i, I those those etp and etn industries they gotta they should watch themselves they keep screwing with people they're gonna they're gonna lose a lot of uh Lateral arabesque. Wow. Yes. Getting out there, Mr. Rockluff. Look at you digging into the old thesaurus out there as we keep on rolling. You know who else digs into the old thesaurus whenever you guys reach out to us? It's you folks and your questions. So let's get to a little bit of the old volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com. Sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com. Or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options. Or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, let's get to some questions now. A really quick hyperconvexity. I like that. Hyperconvexity. I like that handle. He just wanted to know, has anyone listened to the Vol Views live? I can never get Mixler to work properly. Wondering if there's another way. He says he's been listening for a while, trying to listen through for a while. Uh, yeah, hyperconvexity. You and everyone else who asks this question all the time, you can get it on podcast whenever you want on every platform under the sun. If you want to join us live, you got to head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. That has all the info. For you can join this show, everything else we do throughout the week. That's also going to get you all the great pro Q and A's and options oddities coming up a little bit later today. So I get you a whole bunch of extra content there as well. So that's how you have to get the live. You head on over to theoptionsider.com/secretclub. That'll give you all the info 
to access the live as well as, of course, get access to the pro podcast feed. So good luck to you there, Hyper Convexity. Look forward to seeing you in the chat out there soon. And in terms of speaking of uh, the pro Q&As, everyone's all fired up about Scott Nation's appearance on the pro Q&A this week. Everyone's saying they ordered his book on CDs. I didn't know CD was still a thing, but apparently Luigi likes himself some CDs. Still. I didn't know you can get an audio book on CD, but yes, his new book coming out, The Anxious Investor. Good timing on that. People are also excited. He did tease for our audience the upcoming launch of VolQ options. They're finally going to be listed. Uh, the futures have been listed on CME for a while, not really done a heck of a lot. So you think sometime in the next three weeks to a month, we will finally see VolQ. So those of you who want to get maybe a different flavor of volatility, uh, some NASDAQ vol, that one will be interesting for you. Luigi's asking, is he looking forward to those options? What do you guys think? What kind of strategies will... Well, we talked about that with Scott, actually. I think some people ask that exact question. What strategies? Are there any differing strategies for NASDAQ vol versus S&P vol? And, you know, for most vol indexes, they're going to be pretty biased to the upside, right? So I think a lot of that standard stuff still applies. People are going to be buying calls. They're going to be doing one by twos so things get juicy, those types of things. But he did point out an interesting nugget, which I think is worth listening to. And listeners, if you haven't checked out the pro Q&A, you should check it out. He mentioned that there is an interesting disassociation between NASDAQ vol and S&P vol, particularly during earnings season. And he liked actually butterfly calendars. It was a pretty esoteric way to approach it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And that might be worthy of further discussion with him about how to approach that type of thing. So yeah, interesting. Usually it's going to trade and look at 80% overlap with the S&P, right? So a lot of your standard strategies are going to apply. But outside of those moments, there's certainly times around earnings season where things get a little bit disassociated. That may be interesting. I don't know, uh, Andrew or Tom, whoever whoever has thoughts on this. Have you thought about NASDAQ vol versus S&P vol and what strategies may resonate well in one versus the other? And what are your thoughts about calendars with NASDAQ vol during earnings in particular? Oh my, dude, that's like that. That's like five separate classes. Right and you, you, got, you got like two <laughs> minutes, so have at it, sir. <laughs> yeah, so... I would say uh, I, I've I've liked uh, so a trade that I just I have on or just unwinding if I would do it in a halfway decent fashion was owning some Q calendars with uh, some protective puts with the where the vol is right now that worked out pretty well um, so I like you can find different ways to buy the uh, buy the gamma in the Qs as far as calendars into earnings um, I don't like holding stuff through earnings but they can work. So with some stocks prior to um and right now there's a lot of good calendar trading because you have the back month vol is relatively the the front month the pre earnings vol is relatively high next to the back month so there is a lot of good calendar opportunities right now and a lot of tech names you do have that front month vol is pretty high which personally i think is a great time for a calendar in tech so hopefully i answer those things fast enough and that's what i'm doing all right. Yeah, because we got to keep on rolling here. We got more questions that are very in depth. Maybe we'll get to more of them next week. Keep those questions coming. Don't worry. We'll get to you out here on the show. By the way, we have a great question of the week. It's going away in two hours right now, listeners. What is your cutoff? What is your threshold for cheap options trading? Is it 15 bucks, 10 bucks, five bucks, or no limits? You're a savage. You don't care what the price of the underlying is. You will trade options on it. Right now, you no limit savages are winning with 40% of the vote. Followed by 28% saying below 15 bucks. That seems strangely high to me. 24% saying below five bucks. And 8%, only 8% saying what I thought was going to be the clear winner, below 10 bucks. So there you go. Have at it at options. You got two hours left. Podcast folks, you're probably out of luck. But live folks, you still have time to get in there, make your voices heard. Meanwhile, it's time for all of us to get difficult, to get dangerous. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, listeners, welcome to the portion of the show where we attempt to wrestle with the volatility gods and see what they have in store for us. At the end of the show, we have Vic's shy of the 22 handle, about 2185 or so, spikes at 2260 or so. So nice little disassociation between spikes and VIX, and looks like this time last week it was myself, the meatball, and then Ben and Scott over there, and uh, Scott Maydell and uh, Ben Eifert, and they were both out of 25, so they were the two lowest 
on the panel last week. I was at 27-23, so I was feeling a little bit more ball creeping back in. Uh, the meatball said he was, quote-unquote, fading his book at 33-33. Uh, the moral of the story is no joy, no winners from any of us. Looks like we had some interesting listener submissions. Uh, options Queen not looking bad out there. Munster, ooh, Mensa not looking bad either. So we'll have to have our producers go through these and see who uh, who is our winner, winner, chicken dinner for this week, if any. Let's go around the horn. Tom, you were not on last week, so you get pride of place. You get to go first. What are you feeling for this time next week, sir? Um, I th- I'm going to go with uh, spikes. Uh, my pure guess is a lower spikes level um, as this trend might continue a little bit. Um, let's say, let me see here. I'm thinking, let's go with, um, I don't know, 20, 21. 21 even for Mr. Tom. Now, Mr. M- Mr. I almost said Mr. Meatball. I apologize. Mr. Rock Lops, your same question for you, sir. You were not on last week, so you get to go as well. What are you feeling for this time next week? Um, uh, so I, you had Ben Eifert on last week. He's a, he's a really funny guy on Twitter. Yeah, we had him like on. His... We had him and Scott Maydell from uh, the Q, with Q9 Advisors, I believe. Yes, oh, but he didn't win. He didn't win the, the ball thing. He was so at, I, he, I not he was at, him shit. He was at a he 25. Win. He was at 25. No victory for him for a DJ uh, D, DJ like, Deval. He's gone down a peg in my book. He didn't win the crystal ball. DJ Deval, um, no win for him. No win for him. So I'm going, um, so I'm going to, so I want, so I'm doing 19, so I'm doing 1989 VIX, which would be 2089 spikes. So you said 2089 in spikes. And what was it? 19 VIX? 1989 uh, VIX. Oh, 19, a good, a good year. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. All right, 1989 VIX, 2089. All right, everyone's feeling the fade, which means I get to be contrarian a little bit this week because I always, I'm, lately I'm feeling a little bit more upside in vol. Again, not quite as aggressive as perhaps I was last week, which was already coming down from the week before. I was even higher last week. So I'm gonna, I like a little bit lower than my level for last week. I think something's going to conspire to firm us up a little bit again out there. I'm going to say... 247 no 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 it's 2469 out there all right so that's our market for this week um at the upside again 2469 mr rock lobster is at the low end 1989 and tom in the somewhat lower middle at an even 21 all right that music means we got to get on out of here for this episode listeners but hey if you need more in your ear holes just come back in a little less than an hour the rock lobster and i will break down the week that was, and indeed still is, from an unusual activity perspective. What crazy trades did we put on this week? you got to wait to find out. Options Oddities, theoptionsider.com slash secret club to get over there and join all the fun. Mr. Rocklops, I know you have to go prepare for all things oddities, sir. So uh, folks want to reach out to you and find out more. Where should they go? What should they do? Again, uh, just call 888-TRADE-01. Sorry, Ask for Ted. And again, as we all know, just so say Andrew is the ha- most handsome man in option radio, and you get 10% off all option pit products just because you listen to this. Show. Why do you want our listeners to lie to Ted? I don't, wow. I don't understand. <laughs> why, why are you doing this? You, they, you know what the password is now. The discount code, the sexiest man in options, and it's the real mark, not the meatball out there. You say the truth to Ted, and you get your discount over there at optionpit.com. Anything else, listeners, is a clear and bald face lie. We'll be back with the Rock Lobster in about 55 minutes. We'll see if he's cleared his head up since then. And Mr. Tom, if folks are intrigued, I see you guys have added a lot of cool stuff to uh, the myaxoptions.com slash spikes page. So you got anything cool you want to plug there? Any teases you want to leave our audience with? Now is the time, sir. The floor is yours. Yeah, I would say uh, if you go if you go to myaxoptions.com overall and you look on the products, you can see... Um, you know, our three different categories of uh, unique proprietary products. Uh, within Spikes, we also have uh, information about the V-Spikes index in there. And uh, one thing I wanted to note, too, is that um, we have a at the very bottom of the website, you click on that YouTube um, icon. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. We've been putting a little content on there. Simon and I have did a video on V-Spikes recently, and there's some other just, you know, Spikes-related um, uh, and, you know, the other products as well, like bricks and, and tax products, uh, webinars. And so there's, you know, we're, we're starting to put more and more content on there. There you MyAxOptions.com. go. MyAxOptions.com. There you go. MyAxOptions.com is the place to go to learn more. Like I said, we have to get on out of here. So if you're on the on-demand side, that does conclude 
our broadcast week. We want to thank all of you out there for joining us this week, not just for this show, but for everything we have out there, the option block, Twifo, crypto, all that fun stuff, options, boot camp, options, playbook radio, and a whole bunch more. We'll be back again next week with all our usual rash of shows, including the advisors option. We'll be back to that with the Oracle of New Hampshire joining us to break down some earnings. Well, that should be fun as well as all the way through to another episode next Friday of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.